Hello everyone, Kay here on my homestead in Tennessee. I'm coming to you from my sunroom and this is my fig tree that spent the winter inside. I also have a fig tree in the ground out in the garden. It's completely bare, but inside this tree is completely leafed out and I have my first fig developing. This is zone seven and when I was in my California garden, I think it was zone 11A, Maybe, uh, of course, my fig trees were fantastic. I had never tasted a fig before I grew my own. They were so prolific, I gave them to people going down the street. I'm gonna be sharing links with you in the cards above for more information. And when you only have one here and there, you don't miss it. You don't miss that opportunity to, to eat that yummy fig. So, this tree will probably continue to live in the pot. We will decide. But today what we're going to focus on is rooting fig cuttings. Now our friend Charles at IV Organics YouTube channel and Plant Care Products Company has a big giveaway of fig cuttings in February and of course I didn't want to miss out. I would love to grow more figs here. We'll see what the possibilities are. But today I'm going to show you how I am going to root these fig cuttings. So let's head into the other room. I don't know about you, but when it's time to start seeds, my dining room, which is an extension of my kitchen, just becomes a seed operation. And I had to do some major cleaning off just to be able to set this up. I would love to have a big studio one day, one day, when I have a greenhouse, I'll be able to do that. So what we're gonna do is we are going to root these fig cuttings. Now, I received five cuttings. Let me just tantalize you with the names of these. That's got a number and letters, and it's called Kelly Lynn. So I guess that's the person that donated. Many people donated, especially the Fig Hunter, and you can go to his YouTube channel, their YouTube channel, and check them out. And uh, this is Black Mission Fig. I've had those before, they're fantastic. And this is uh, the Chicago Hardy, which I believe is that one in there. I'm not sure. You know, when you, when you plant things out in the yard and it's got that big, beautiful tag from the nursery and you think, I'm leaving that tag there. Well, guess what? Between the sun, the wind, the rain, the, you know, expansion, those plastic uh, labels just fade away, disintegrate, so I don't even know what I have anymore. This is where a journal would come in handy. Many people have said, hey, you have to keep a garden journal. Well, haven't quite uh, managed to do that yet. This is called Grandpa Sampson's Green Fig. I had the Desert King Green Fig in California. It was fantastic. Now, that was given to me by my friend Jack Davis, who basically got me started on figs because she was growing a lot of figs and she was doing propagation in her Phoenix area garden. This is Maria's Panache Tiger Fig. That sounds interesting. Some of these are longer than others and so I have two different sizes of cup that I'm going to use. I tried to get completely clear but it's not easy to get completely clear. I think you can see through these okay. But what we're going to do is we are going to, first of all, first of all, you have to cut your cup at the bottom. Uh, take some, you know, heavy duty scissors, or I'm just using my uh, Corona garden clippers, which is not the actual best thing to use. I think scissors would be better. Don't want to hurt yourself. But if you just put at least four slits in the bottom, let's see, that water is going to run through. And the number one thing you have to be concerned about with rooting the fig cuttings is the stem rotting. Now, how many of you have experienced this? You've tried to root things and been unsuccessful, even using rooting hormone which is the white powder that you dip your, your cut end into. It's happened to me many, many times. So 
Charles recommends 50-50 with vermiculite and perlite. And so I went out specifically and got those yesterday, and I have already mixed that together. So it's powdery. I'm going to give you a look. You see this is mixed together. The vermiculite is the beige, really finely crushed, and the perlite is the white. It's almost like popcorn. They, they heat this up so that it's extremely lightweight. They add this to pretty much any potting soil will have perlite in it. What we're doing is just eliminating the uh, potting soil right now. So here we go. We are going to, let's just start. So I need to actually cut five of these. <laughs> Hang on while I do that. <laughs> okay, so I have my cups and they've all got four holes that drip. And the important thing is that you do not want your cuttings to the stem to rot. And potting soil, you know, with the peat moss and all of that can hold the water and, and you want the water to just drain through. And what we're going to do is when they're filled up, we'll put them in a tray and we'll water from the bottom. Okay, so let's get started. I have the perlite and vermiculite mixed up about 50-50 and you want them, the cutting is going to go in up to one inch from the bottom. You don't want it sitting right on the bottom, but you want enough support. So it depends on how tall your cutting is, you know. I tried to find taller plastic cups, but I couldn't find them yesterday. So, um, and I also tried to find cups that were completely clear so you could see it better, but I couldn't find that either. So this is what I wound up with. Now, you don't need clear cups. You can do it with any, you can reuse any of your cups from picking up food or whatever. But if they're clear, or if you can see through them, <clears throat> I found some that were clearish. They were kind of a color, but kind of clear. And let's get these filled up and then we'll unwrap our cuttings. Okay. And that is very dusty and it's kind of making me want to sneeze and cough. So watch out for that when you're working on this. What you want to do is be sure and remember to make your tag for your particular fig. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tape these names onto the cup itself and then in addition I am going to have a plant tag just in case. This is TFH 1845 Kelly Lynn and I am going to tape this on my cup right away. If there's one thing that I have a problem with, it's record keeping. <laughs> I get so much in my head that I want to do and I go, okay, okay, what was the name of that plant? Well, I don't know. So, <laughs> here we go. Now the way these were prepared and, and what you will do if you want to create your own cuttings is you will cut about a quarter of an inch below a node. Oh, this has more than one. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> there was just one in here. I didn't want to open these until I actually did it because the paper towel is wet and... Yeah, so there's two in here. This is fantastic. So these were cut at an angle below a node and the node is where the roots are going to grow out of. So this needs to go, actually you can do it, let's see, let's do this one. You know what? Now I'm seeing that it kind of compacts and I want to get it in there as gently as I can. So I'm going to start with less and add two. So that's about an inch above. Okay. 
and that one is that one is done. Ta da! Okay, so one. This one is shorter. It's already got, in, it looks like it's already get, wanting to have a root coming out of the end there. I don't know if you can see that. But once again, let's do that. Back off on the, get that just right, just about an inch from the bottom. And enough of the <clears throat> powder <coughs> to, uh, it might be a little too much. You want the roots to grow there. Straighten that up a little bit. Oh, what I was going to say is the great thing about having a clear cup. You don't need to. You can use whatever you have. You can even use, you know, if you have these left over from buying nursery plants, you can use those because they already have the holes. See, I have the issue of I only had one label and I had two cuttings, so I have to do this right now and write down what this is. Where did it go? Did I put that in the wrong thing? put it in the wrong one. I'm glad I noticed that. I'm not perfect, okay? I've been doing this for 11 years. I'm not perfect. I do things different ways. In fact, I was going to, I hear my battery going for my fire alarm. I guess it's time, you know those, ten, those batteries that say they're good for 10 years? and you have to change them every year? What's up with that? That was a 10-year battery and it's already squeaking on me. Okay, so this is... And there's absolutely nothing I can do about that battery right now. So... Okay. Moving along. I just want to point out, I have the products for IV Organics here. This is the, um, actually it's like, you paint it on, it's a, this is whitewash, and this is for insects, rodents, and it protects against sun damage to the trunk of your trees. So we'll be doing that as the season progresses. Mm. Well, I have been on a wild goose chase looking for the fire alarm that's beeping to tell me it needs a new battery. I can't find it. So you may hear that. Now I was unwrapping a couple more of these cuttings and I noticed it doesn't look like there's root hormone on here. It might have gotten off in the in the paper towel but I'm just going to dip it to get it nice and coated on the bottom. This is Garden Safe Take Root Rooting Hormone, and it's very easy. And so, let's see. Let's do this one. And I kind of, you know, since this is split here, I'd really like to keep that above the uh, above the line of the rooting medium. I'm still having a problem with this dust, so. Be careful when you're using this <coughs> because it does cause a problem. <laughs> okay. There it goes again. got two more. I wound up with 10 or 11 instead of 5. So I wasn't quite prepared. But hey, this is great. If some don't work, then, you know, I'll for sure wind up with these five varieties. 
and there are three more. So I have cut the bottom so you, you want the water to be able to drip out obviously. Okay, I need to write two more labels. Grandpa's Samans. Green fig. I'm so glad to have a green. As I mentioned, a number of people contributed these cuttings, and I'm going to put the link right up here. You can go up and click on that and find out who these people are that were so generous to provide these cuttings. And I'm hoping I can get, let's see, nope. It's going to be too much, so I'll have to get a smaller tray. You have to be very careful not to dump this out. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't even think, I don't even think I have enough. I need more. These tall ones need more support. Okay. Is that everybody? Yes, it is. Okay. Let me get another tray for these two, and I'll be right back. These are too shallow to support them. It's fine if nothing is going to knock them over, but even handling this tray so I had an extra litter box <laughs> that was just exactly the right size and still there, you know, they could easily tip over. So what I'm doing is putting a smaller cup in between each one and that way there's, there's more support. And I'm just going to see if one more will fit in here. No, that's all that will go. So, unless, let's see, this is actually bigger, I might use these. Now, I know this probably seems like overkill, but I also know how I tend to spill things. So, you need a good tray to hold the water. And you don't want them tipping over. Still a little wobbly. I think I'll switch them all out. And then I'm going to water a little bit from the top to start. And then I'm just going to water from the bottom. Look at that. A little wobbly here, but I don't know what more I can do. I don't 
think they'll fall over. Okay. Okay, we did it. <laughs> Even with the fire alarm, smoke alarm, I was calling it a fire alarm, smoke alarm going off. Hmm. We're going to be doing more videos when it's time to use the fertilizer and the wash for the plants. But for now, we're just going to water a little bit from the top. Settle that dust a little. <laughs> the main thing is not to let them sit in a lot of water and rot. That's what happens so often. But if you'd like to know how to air layer propagation, Jack Davis and I did a video when she came out to California to see me and click that link right up there and you'll learn how to do that. That was a great success too. So if you've got an existing tree, you can actually um, propagate that way. Okay, everybody, I am really anxious to see these roots coming forth. I wanted a clear tray so I could just look at the tray and see through the tray to see through the cup to see if the roots are coming. But as it is, I will be able to just lift these up and see the root development. But perhaps as soon as three weeks, I can be potting these up. If you have any questions, be sure and leave a comment below. Of course, Charles will be watching this video, and you can always leave a question for Charles on his channel. Be sure and check out the Fig Hunter and Ivy Organics YouTube channels for a lot more information on growing figs. I hope that was interesting and helpful, and take it away, Kay. So the jury is still out since I don't have a greenhouse, and this sunroom is already packed. The jury is still out as to how I am going to grow more figs. But I've got a little time, and who knows what might happen, right? So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to click the bell for notifications so you won't miss an episode. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. I'm Kay, and I'll see you next time. I really wish I had thought of this stationary technique back when I was starting all of my tomatoes and peppers in solo cups. I spilled so many. It's a, it's a great idea. <laughs> mm. I think it would be better to do this outside. <coughs> I've got this perlite and vermiculite. Is that what I have? <laughs> yes. <laughs>